Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Hardy from WWE. Well, one of the legends of WWE in the house. Matt, how are you? Welcome to Houston. Thank you very much. Uh, I love coming to Houston. Excited to be here. Yeah, so I saw you at the uh, Minute Maid Park a couple of days ago. You threw the first pitch, if I'm not mistaken, with Booker T? or Booker actually threw the first pitch, okay. and I actually uh, beat up the mascot. Oh, that, that's, that sounds even more fun than throwing the first pitch. Were you a baseball fan growing up? Or? I was, yeah. Uh, my brother and I, we played baseball. Uh, we played, you know, T-ball and Little League, and that, that was our first big dream. We wanted to be professional baseball players. We loved baseball, and we were both pretty good at it. But then once we saw wrestling, that took over, and we wanted to be living, breathing superheroes. So, so is that how it worked out? Like, you went from uh, professional sports like baseball and then decided, you know what, wrestling is our thing. Did you try your, your hand at football, anything else? We played all, all sports, you know, uh, baseball, football, basketball, all, all the basic sports. And then once we fell in love with wrestling, that kind of took a hold of us, and then that became our destiny. See, I remember growing up, a lot of people thought, you know, if, if you want to be a wrestler, you don't they, – they don't – a lot of people didn't see wrestlers as actual athletes. They, they thought, oh, you know, wrestlers, they, it's, just, it's just wrestling. But then when you actually get to see what you guys do in the ring, it's like, no, you have to be an athlete to be able to do all of this regardless of your weight. If you're not an athlete, you can't be a wrestler. Yeah, now more than ever. I mean, it's so much more athletic based. You know, there's like obviously, you know, that we're here and this is an English and Spanish show. Lucha Libre has had such an influence, I think, on even American wrestling. It's had to become a lot more athletic, exciting, and now the guys are doing stuff like it's it's normal to do the stuff my brother and I did, and we were like the standout guys because yeah. we were smaller guys, not big, 350 pounds, six foot eight monsters like it used to be back in the day, and now it's definitely more athletic based. I, I find it funny when you say, um, you know, we're the smaller guys. You're, you're what, 6'2"? Six about six, 220 pounds? 6'1", 220, 220. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like when you say we're the smaller guys and you're thinking, well, he's actually over 6'1". That's, that's not that's not exactly a, a small person. Um, I don't know if you if you follow boxing a couple of months ago when um, Andy Ruiz Jr. beat uh, Anthony Joshua for the heavyweight championship. They were saying, oh, you know, the little Mexican guy beat Anthony Joshua. And I'm thinking, this guy's 6'2", 280 pounds. I'm like, he's not a little Mexican. Not a little at all, right. <laughs> so so how, how, does, how does the lucha style affect uh, wrestling now? Is it, is it a more, more uh, dynamic? Yeah, I, I just think the, the, the in-ring competition part of it is a lot more exciting. And I think, you know, like lucha libre is very like move and, and dive. And it's like athletic based and, and there's a lot of acrobatics involved. And I think that is kind of carried over to like, uh, you know, the, the typical WWE style. Is it, is it changing as far as like the big guys? Are they are they kind of uh, is it kind of staying behind now, where the big guys are no longer the the main card? It's changed. I mean, big guys still have to be talented. They have to be good and and athletic as well. Like Brock Lesnar is like you know a, a one in a million athlete. You know he's very very special. Braun Strowman is another interesting guy. That's a big guy, but also very athletic. They have to be able to go. It's just the old school days of being the athletic uh, or being the big muscle man that's not athletic those days are gone those are long gone so matt you've been pretty much through what like three generations of uh, ww at this point how, how do you how do you stay relevant so much i mean what, what do you do what's 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 in matt hardy's head this october actually will be 28 years i've been doing this 28 years in the business so i think to stay relevant it's just so important to understand you have to change you can't stay the same it's like any great television show mm -hmm. there's always changes and evolution in any character you know any persona and the same thing with wrestling you know and as i get older to try and get more longevity i've tried to to take on characters that are more like entertainment based you know i can still get in the ring i can still have good matches but it's hard for me to have like great matches you know every night 10 nights back to back like i did when i was 25 years old right you know so i try and be a lot more entertainment and a lot more uh, character driven now so uh, yeah so how, how do you stay healthy i mean 28 years of bumps and and, and hits and chairs and ladders uh, it's got to take away in your body man it, it, it definitely does and i can feel that to a degree you know but it's like i just i i train i'm very strict with my training in this day and age you know i get up in the morning i do empty stomach cardio before i started this media day i was doing empty stomach cardio I mean uh, what like you run five miles or what do you do uh, I, I do elliptical just because my knees are a little beat up. I, I don't run. Okay. But I, I do the elliptical, and usually I'll do it where I, I warm up for maybe 10 minutes, and I'll do like 15 minutes where I do interval training of like very intense, going as hard as you can go, you know, for like mm -hmm. uh, 30, 45 seconds. And, and, and I'll do one body part hard. I try and stretch more. I almost incorporate a little bit of yoga in my routine. And then my diet is very key in this day and age. Just as you get older, it's like father time. It's yeah. hard on you when it comes to that diet. I, I bereaved the days of when I was 25 and could eat whatever and still have abs in the morning. What, what do you what do you do as far as diet? What's what's your what's your typical diet, man? Uh, basically, I try not to eat like past 
eight thirty, nine o'clock now. That's that's my that's my game plan. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like do that intermittent fasting overnight, and I'll get up and I'll, I'll do empty stomach cardio. But then my first meal is usually my biggest meal. If I'm gonna have some carbs, I'll try and put them in that. But then I just try and eat very healthy, very clean, and as much protein as possible, and make my meals smaller and smaller as the day goes on. Well, so so you so you're basically uh, it, it's gotta be hard. I mean, how many, how many days a week uh, a week are you out of your house? You're five six days a week. If it's a normal work week, I'm usually gone four days a week, and one of those is a travel day, so usually five days. Where are you living right now? You're in Florida? Or? I, I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina? I live, I live in North Carolina, and uh, I was born and raised in Cameron. I'm on the same piece of property I was born and raised on. And nice. I have a, a, a house and land. It's called the Hardy Compound. It's been in skits, and it's part of the Broken Universe. And I live there. I have two beautiful boys. Uh, I have a third one on the way in December. My wife is uh, – is, uh, she's – my lovely wife, uh, Rebecca, she's also Puerto Rican as well. So right, it's like right. I'm slowly – with my boys, I'm going to go full-fledged into into my Spanish as well as far as learning. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's got to be tough. How's your Spanish right now? Uh, I can comprehend it. I know words, but I'm terrible at, like, stringing along a coherent sentence. So you just kind of so – you, so you know enough to read and get by, but, you know. Yeah, 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 and I can understand, you know, because I, I know words. But, like, I'm going to try and, like – as my kids learn, I'm going to learn with them. So you're in Houston because the Royal Rumble is coming up on January of 2020. So you, so people are thinking, well, if it's in January, why is Matt Hardy here right now? Uh, Matt Hardy is here right now because tickets go on sale Friday. And uh, it's going to be a huge event. It's the first time, obviously, we've ever been at the Minute Make Park. And we'll probably have 50,000 plus people there. And uh, tickets are going to go fast. So I just want everybody to get a hold of these tickets. And, and the Royal Rumble, in my opinion, is one of the most fun events of the year. It and is. it's also one of the most unpredictable matches. And not only do you have a men's Royal Rumble match, you have a women's Royal Rumble match. So it's going to be a great, great show. How, how's that new integration? I mean, the, the the women are such a big division in WWE now. That's, that's a huge change for you guys. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and I think it's cool. I think uh, WWE is mirroring society in a lot of ways, you know, and, and the equality you know between men and women is really coming to prominence and also just inclusion for everyone you know kind of society is 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 really living by the standards now about how it's important to include everyone so i'm, I'm glad wb is following suit how many rumbles have you been part of oh my god i, I couldn't even tell you uh I, i've probably been in 12 13 rumble 12. matches have you won any of the rumbles i haven't i've never won a rumble that's one thing i haven't done in my career so are we going to see you at the rumble in january i'll be there and my brother will be back at that point too so yeah i'll, I'll definitely be back speaking of that back up and running i just found this this is when you guys came back am i, am I mistaken uh i think it was the year before was this it the year is, before this is wrestlemania 34 if i'm not mistaken the one so that was, was in new, new orleans. orleans this is the one where i won the andre the giant battle royal i that's haven't right. won a royal rumble but i did win the andre the giant battle royal that counts i mean it's that's yeah, it's, a, it's that, very similar that counts it's that in the counts. same vein yeah 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 that counts so awesome matt well we haven't seen you in the wrestling ring uh in the, in the last uh, few few weeks or so uh, what what's what are the what's the plan uh I'll be back on WWE television before too long. Uh, myself and my brother, we'd become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and unfortunately, my brother had a knee injury he'd been yeah. dealing with for a while, and he had to leave to have surgery. So ever since he's had that surgery, I've been kind of lying in wait to return to television in a singles capacity, and I think we're going to make sure that we do it right whenever I do it. So I'm excited about returning, and uh, I think it's going to be very cool. So I have to ask you this. Houston's a huge hub for uh, indie wrestlers. What's... Is there life after WWE in the indies and vice versa? I mean, I know you've you've been back and forth. You guys have been with WWE, have left, come back. What's what's it like outside of WWE when you leave? Uh, I, 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 there's stuff out there. I mean, WWE obviously is is the is the greatest wrestling promotion in the history of sports entertainment. You know, and, and it's the place you want to be. Everybody wants to be there. And now it's going to be so massive. You know, we're going SmackDown is going to Fox starting in October. Right. We're going to have a live show. Raw is going to be live on Monday. NXT live on Wednesday and SmackDown live on Fox on Fridays. I mean, that's unreal. And then there's going to be live events. I mean, it's just so. You got NXT on TV now too. Like, how do you keep up? uh, There's a lot going on. I mean, it's it's a golden age to be a wrestling fan right now. You know, so and and NXT last night was amazing. So so good. Last night was their first night on USA. So uh, I'm just excited for the future of the industry, and I think. All of these shows, and, and, and if WWE does well, that means the, the indies and, and outside of WWE does well as well because everything kind of like trickles down from the WWE. So that's a good thing, and, it, and it's great for all the up-and-coming wrestlers because it gives them a lot of opportunities and a lot of places they can work, and it gives them more spots where there's more opportunities for them to come to WWE in the future. What's, how many more years of uh, in-ring performance do you, do you uh, want out of yourself? 
I'm looking. I I think about three more years, and yeah. and I want to contribute as much as possible. You know, it's like I've been doing this once again. Like I said, for 28 years, I I feel like 30, 31 years is about it. If my body can hold up for about three more years, which I think it can, because I'm trying to be a lot smarter now. I'm a lot more entertainment driven, persona driven, and and that's my goal going forward with this new. So you're not, you're not taking the well. same hits uh, off ladders that you were taking then. Not, so, not, not as many. Years ago, I'm, I'm yeah. trying not to fall off ladders every yeah. single night. That's that, multiple that was, times. That was, that, <laughs> I mean, that, but that's what made the Hardy Boys, right? That's that's what no made doubt, the Hardy Boys. no doubt. I, yeah. I think. I mean, I'm, it's arguably you guys were the one of the best tag team uh, tag teams in ladder matches ever. Thank you. I mean, we were we're very happy that was our claim to fame, and and it really was. That is what made us who we were. And if we hadn't have had those ladder matches and the table matches and the TLC matches, we wouldn't be the Hardy Boys. When you guys were kids, did you think you and Jeff were gonna be tag team champions in WWE? Well, our goal, our goal, our dream was to be WWE World Tag Team Champions one time, and anything past that was extra credit. So obviously, we surpassed it. We highly exceeded <laughs> oh, sorry, that I was, original goal. I, I was I, I looked at your Wikipedia page the other day and I said I said let me just check how many championships I can bring it up. After scrolling I said, you know what, forget it. He's won everything. <laughs> right. what, what's left? I mean what's left? Universal title? Uh I mean that 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 would be about it. You know, at at this point my goal is to like contribute as much as possible for these next few years uh help out some of the younger talent and just be super entertaining just be something where the fans go oh my god if i see broken matt hardy or woken matt hardy like i don't know what he's gonna do i don't know what he's gonna do or say next like i can't wait i'm on the edge of my seat waiting for his next move that's what i want to do perfect well matt uh you know tell the fans if they want to go to the royal rumble in 2020 because things are going to go fast um i bought a pair yesterday and uh, i'm I'm, t i'm gonna tell you right now it's gonna be they're gonna go really fast seats are really good and um And they're not they're actually not expensive i mean uh considering i've bought tickets to wrestlemania before and and, and uh you know comparing the the seating they're actually very attainable yeah it, it, the the royal rumble is a great event i think the uh tickets start as low as twenty dollars yeah. you know but but like this event it will it'll sell out and it's going to be amazing it's going to be packed so get your tickets soon get your tickets before all the tickets are deleted